Hey. hey! Hola, como esta? Oh, oh, I'm good. How are you? I'm all right. I started my lock journey. For real? Yeah. Oh, it's not. That's only a hey. month in, though. Welcome to the game. Welcome to the game. I'm about to wick them up here soon, probably. probably really? Better. Yeah. It's a lot of hair up here, so I've been letting it grow. Yeah, hold on. I mean, minute. yours have gotten pretty long, though. Yeah, I dropped these things right now. What? Oh, boy. Would they take us down for playing music in the background? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> um, I do not own, I do not so. own the copyrights <laughs> for this music. Hey, right. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Unless I just back up. Hey. How y'all doing? I'm good. How are you? Good. Excuse me while I apply some lotion. Oh, no, you're good. I just got out of the shower. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Hey. Can y'all hey, hear me? Fun. Yeah, we can hear you. <laughs> okay. Um, hey, everybody that's joined. This is my first time doing this, so bear with me. <laughs> You're doing a good job. Miss Hats, okay? Are y'all good and ready to go? Just go. Um, all right. I got good lighting. I got all this huh? good. Yeah, I got all this good lighting, though. So, hey, it's Daisha D, and this is the In Retrospect podcast. We look beyond the surface to find understanding, bring you laughs, knowledge, and culture. Um, I do not have Jay Stan here today, but hopefully he'll be with us uh, next week when we go live. And I will let my lovely guests introduce themselves. Starting with uh, Carlton. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> now nah, we can go ladies first. Okay. I'll go ahead and go. Hi, my name is Alexandria Searles. I am a visual artist and graphic designer. Um, my passion is empowering women and informing or empowering children to hold on to their dreams and, you know, aspire to be what they're passionate about. And that's Cookie. You'll see her throughout. <laughs> hey, everybody. I'm Cam Scott. Um, originally from Charleston. Excuse me, Charleston, South Carolina. Lived in Charleston for a while. Um, I'm in Boston right now. I'm a software developer uh, for an alternative high school, but um, I'm also an endometriosis advocate. And I recently started the Expansion Lab, which is a program to expose black and brown students to opportunities sooner rather than later so that they're um, competitive in the workplace. Okay. All right. <laughs> I'm Carlton Holland. I am a fourth and fifth grade special education instructor. I'm a football and track coach in South South Carolina. Um, currently, I also am working with um, a small business called Accelerate, where we work on making better student athletes. So student first is the model. All right. So thank you all for joining me. We're going to do uh, basically some current events, things that have been in the news lately. It's been a lot going on, but one of the one of the things that I saw recently circulating around like TikTok, Twitter, Instagram, it's this podcast. Have no idea what podcast it is, but there's a girl who is saying that basically men will only date big women 
if they are financially insecure and that skinny women mean that you have to do more work for them. Um, that's the only part of the conversation that has gone viral, but is really grabbing people's attention. And I wanted to know your thoughts on that. Is that true? Do men only date big women when they're down and out? I don't think so. <laughs> Maybe that's her experience. Well, that I don't know. Also, it was a slim woman who said that. So, and you know, I'm. I don't think that I don't identify as a as a bigger woman. I don't think that people identify me as bigger. So, I I don't think I have a seat at the table in the conversation in terms of you know how, uh, like what what caliber of men um they pull. But mm -hmm. I I just going off of my gut. I think absolutely not. I I think that like, um. That's so condescending to say that, um, you know, uh, big women are easier. In, like the the standard that big women have for men is much lower. I think that is absolutely inaccurate. Um, listening to that clip earlier, though, um, she mentioned how like they'll cook, um, clean, and feed them, and everything like that. Um, I don't really think it's a, anything to do with class. I think it more so with like a man being able to be a man, you know, the saying is, you know, the best way to man, the way to a man's heart is through his stomach. So, you know, if you got somebody, if you got somebody there that's going to feed you well and put it all on the plate and, you know, you coming home to that plate and it's going to be exactly what you want, then it's, then that make, doesn't that make things easier? And it does. So I think that's just, I think that's just a little bit of insecurity or something on, on that part. And just like, I think when you bring what you're supposed to bring to the table, then, you know, you find that happiness and then, you know, about it. I think we make a little too many assumptions based on how people look because even you just said you have a uh, I guess the way to their heart is through their stomach but just because somebody's big doesn't mean they can cook either <laughs> so there's that um, but I definitely disagree with her I think that it has everything to do with whatever standards that woman or man has for themselves I don't think it's determined on what they look like their size their hairstyle complexion whatever but I honestly think there might be some people who are uncomfortable with the fact that bigger people are starting to be a little more confident in how they look and calling them fat just doesn't hit the same as it did when they were 10 or 12 anymore. I don't know. I don't know I'm sorry. Reach, I missed that but... last part. <laughs> you said bigger people are more Oh, I said I think that... Confident, confident. Yeah, I feel like bigger people are becoming more confident in how they look and they realize, like, I can wear whatever I want to wear. I can wear this crop top. You're going to see this fupa. Like, it's it's whatever. <laughs> I'm going to do what makes me comfortable. And maybe there are people who are threatened by that because they're no longer, I don't know, I they feel more worthy. I guess. I'm going yeah. I'm to I'm gonna say what it really what it really comes down to is a matter of who's healthy and who's not healthy. All right? Um, mm -hmm. it, it comes to weight, size, and everything like that. It's just really about a matter of who's healthy, and usually on the others on the on, on the unhealthy side of the spectrum, you know, you do have the obesity, you do have the weight, and everything like that that goes on that side. So I mean, at the end of the day, health as well. So I think that's okay. where we where where it needs to stand at, like about who's healthy and who's. And there's nothing saying that somebody who's um, five eight hundred and twenty pounds doesn't isn't going through some isn't going through anything negative at all, um, like going through dealing with cancer or something along those lines. So I mean. But I think where people are, where the frustrations come from, when people are, they are like, okay, well, that person isn't as isn't living a healthy lifestyle as me, or they think that that person is not living a healthy lifestyle based on their size and on their weight and on their on that appearance. When you very well know somebody, you know, you look at our NFL players, they're six eight, three hundred twenty pounds, and they are in the perfect condition. You know what I'm saying? So, but um, it's, it really stems. I think that frustration really stems from a, a point of like personal knowing of like okay i'm healthy at this size at this weight and knowing that okay this is where health is at and if i go beyond to another point where you know there's just plain old obesity for whatever your stature is then it's like okay i'm frustrated because that person is doing what i'm is wearing what i'm supposed to be wearing or wearing doing this thing and they're not healthy i think it really frustrates it all stems from being healthy i agree with that to what you said earlier daisha i think um that like uh, 
large people who are bigger are being represented more like in a in a mm-hmm. holistic way in a positive way um i mean even down to just like clothing and you know trends and models and um it's one of those things where um i feel like there's there's an openness i don't i wouldn't say people are threatened by it but people try to like rationalize things that they don't understand because how could you be plus size and be pulling you know, this 6'2 athlete and I'm, you know, 5'7 average, average build and I'm, and I'm single, right? I think people are just trying to project their hurt and their lack of understanding around mm-hmm. something. Um, and I, I think like, no, um, no matter like your size, your skin tone, like all these things that we stereotype people around, none of those mm-hmm. things uh, are indicative of our boundaries around who and how we date. And so I think it was just a, you know, poor uh, narrative to put out there. Yeah. I agree I, with that too. I also think like when it comes to, you know, dating curvier girls or bigger people, it does come down to preference. But I also feel like the stigma attached to that is like the fetish, fetish ooh, I got this word, I'm trying to use it. Fetishization. Fetishizing. Fetishization. Thank you. (laughs) Um, Of dating bigger women because, like, you know, you remember when you were in middle school and high school, oh, she big, oh, she's this, oh, she's that, you know, I can't date a girl like that. And so, like, now that it's no longer, like, it's, like, associating weight with how attractive you are and if you are this amount of weight then there once you surpass this or if you're not skinny and you know tiny thin waist and all that stuff then you're no longer to be considered attractive and so I think that's where it is and it's changing that mindset of you know allowing meeting people where they're at like you're either attracted to them or you're not but let's not Mm -hmm. someone you know might be a bit more curvy, you know, yes, health is a factor, but if you, you can, you can be more than the typical weight and still be healthy. You know, some people carry weight, just carry a lot of weight in different places and and stuff like that. And I am, I can't speak on it too much because that's not necessarily my experience, but um, people should still, you know, be, it's okay for people to be considered attractive. So whatever that, I guess it was a skinny person who said those things or whatever. Yeah. It was a skinnier girl. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Maybe she should mind her own business, like <laughs> <laughs> because why? Are you, like, why are you mad that someone's attracted to somebody? <laughs> but that's what I was saying. I think that because men and women who are bigger are becoming more confident, um, I think maybe that's intimidating to some people. Maybe they want them to stay in their place, whatever that looks like or means. Um, but speaking of looks. Saucy Santana, which is a rapper, he just, or he has a new single out called Booty, where he samples uh, Beyonce Crazy in Love, I think it is. And, okay. and of course, as you start to become more famous, people are going to dig up those good old tweets. <laughs> and I think when he was 20, he tweeted out, or he shared a tweet that said, who wants to be a Blue Ivy in a world where Northwest exists? And he retweeted it and then was like, right, who wants to be nappy? And so people, of course, came at him because they're like, well, how can you sample her mama's music, but you are dogging her? And um, he doubled down on it by basically saying, I'm not going to apologize to y'all. If she's offended, I'll apologize to her. But also, I was young and miserable. And so, yes, I tweeted that. Um, And then shortly after that, uh, a picture has been blowing up with Jay-Z and Blue Ivy at a basketball game recently. And so they posted that. You have good com- uh, comments where people are like, oh, she looks so beautiful. And then you have your trolls who are like, eh, she looks too much like Jay-Z. So I know. Yeah. Why are people, first of all, who is this <laughs> team of basement Twitter watchers who was having cabinets of files of <laughs> from people that they made years ago, just waiting for them to say something. Actually, you said this in, in, in 2007 and you can't say anything now. Um, well, Twitter made it, it easy. Right. You can just put a magnifying glass on them now and type in words to see what a person has tweeted. So They've made it search. much easier. Yes. You can search 
petty. I see. You can search shadily. Um, but yeah, I don't think... <laughs> shady search. Um, that's okay. He shouldn't have said what he said. But also mm -hmm. miserable people love to be miserable and drag other people into their misery. He was definitely wrong mm -hmm. for that. We all know about colorism. Um, we know that it's not right. And we know that it, it has been a journey for, you know, women who are not uh, racially ambiguous or have tighter coiled hair textures or um, what we con would consider in black community called nappy <laughs> hair. And then that whole thing about Blue Ivy when she was even younger, I just think it's absolutely like, Children, you're not supposed to mess with children. First of all, they're not even on Twitter to snap back at you. Second of all, leave children alone. They're children. And yes, the baby looked like her daddy. He had 50% to do with it. <laughs> Go ahead. Oh, Carlton, you're on mute. Rolling. That's all. I was rolling. Because <laughs> Alice had me rolling. Um, yeah, if you're scared of your people, then you're scared of yourself. That's all I got to say on that part. Mm. Yeah, I think, well, speaking for the young girls who look like their daddy. I think that, <laughs> you know, like that's something to be proud of. It's nothing to be ashamed of. Um, I think Blue Ivy is beautiful. I I think what made it tacky wasn't, well, yes, it is tasteless that he said those things, right? But what made it like more tacky was that he doubled down on it. Um, and I don't think that's, I'm not saying that because it's, Beyonce and Jay-Z's child I'm saying that because you know to speak negatively like outright on a public platform about anyone's child is a little disgusting um and while we understand that he can grow and change because I saw some of the tweets that said like that was eight years ago y'all still holding on to eight eight years of of stuff and I'm a whole new person um I think to kind of like to dismiss that old character mm -hmm. who you you were you you very you know you put that was a very real thing you put out there i think it's a it's just uh immature it's just like his emotional intelligence is is highly immature and to be in the business like they're just like there's this political nuance to it that i feel like he's haphazardly navigating i mean obviously i'm not in the music industry but i imagine that like sometimes you just got to be like yeah that was tacky that was tasteless um also yeah you're perpetuating colorism um you, yeah it's just all those things i would expect at his big old age he's willing <laughs> yeah. to identify and and apologize for and not be so nonchalant because i know why they say like cancel cancel culture is like I don't know, like, people are not afraid of it. I do think it's a real thing. People do not let you live. And I already saw all the bees up under, the bee emojis up under all of this stuff recently. So, I mean, the beehive is real. Like, and if you want to get blackballed, please be continue to be nonchalant about it. Um, I think somebody said, uh, King of 843 said, there's people who get paid to search your old tweets. I had no idea that that was even a thing, but I'm sure... I'm sure they enjoyed their job. <laughs> who was, who was these people? This is very, this is very sad. I have no idea. And I think it's weird because it's almost like people think because her parents are Jay-Z and Beyonce that automatically she's not a black child. She's not going to have a black nose or black features. Um, she's not Northwest because she is not, she's monoracial. So I, I, I don't know what they were expecting her to look like. And I think it's pretty sad to troll a child. How, she's like 10, right? 10, 11? As a child. As a yeah, child. I, and Sorry, children are still growing and changing too. Like, But even aside from how she might end up looking, like that's still a child at the end of the day. You know, a child's not going to get on Twitter and defend themselves, especially because they don't have one. Um, but right. it's just, a, and I, I do agree with you. Uh, when you said, like, it's just very tasteless and then not even come to a place where you realize you're wrong and want to apologize, but then double down on it. Like, that's mm -hmm. that's wrong. And you should apologize. You know, go ahead, put out your little, you guys, I said some things. And, you know, I just, <laughs> that's, that's been yeah. going on. on go ahead and put out your little apology video because that was wrong. It was wrong. And I don't mean to be petty and I don't comment on people's looks, but a lot outside of Saucy Santana, a lot of the times when people troll you about how you look, you go to their profile page and they look like who shot John. That's the part I never understand. Like, how are you 
<laughs> we, let's not talk about looks. But yes, that, that's terrible that they would talk about somebody's child. Moving on, um, Nick Cannon did an interview on lip service with Angela Yee from The Breakfast Club. And I guess they were talking about his 20 kids. And he was like, y'all thought the numbers I put up last year were crazy. Just wait for this year. And so apparently he has three or four more kids on the way this year. One of which is with one of his uh, already established mothers. I hate to say baby mamas, but <laughs> one of the moms. So I guess I don't even want to. Yeah, let's start there. Because I was going to say, I've noticed that men in particular have had a lot of heat for Lori Harvey and her, what she's doing, but have not had a lot of in the same energy or heat for Mr. Cannon. And I'm just curious about that. <laughs> so, yeah. It's nasty. That's what I think. <laughs> <laughs> nasty. Ill. And furthermore, bleh. Uh, additionally, uh, because uh, like, I, I just think it's nasty. I don't know. I don't. I don't know. Like, wh why? Why would you choose to continue to have children in so many different households? Granted, he does have the finances to support all these children, but there is no way in God's heaven and earth that you're going to be able <laughs> to emotionally be there and support all of these different families and circles of and children that you have had with all these different women, you're, they're going to grow up and, and not, they're not going to feel like they've had the, you know, all of the, of, of the package of a father <laughs> that, you know, they felt like they should have had. And at least that's just what I think. Like, obviously he looks like he spends time with his children and he, you know, he takes care of them, but first of all, like just ill. And, you know, just like on, on, from the perspective of a child, I just don't think that you're going to be able to be there for all of those children in the way that you know will not end up being damaging to them in the future um secondly i just want to return <laughs> to my first point ill um because how you i mean like these women you know no judgment to them but maybe a little judgment because how you know just like uh and then in regards to the men's men being kind of quiet and silent about it I have an opinion on that. I feel like there's always a double standard. It's very easy for people to only see their perspective and not call out BS on their own, you know, like on their own side. But also, I don't know if I haven't, I don't know if there's men really standing up for him, but I don't know that all of the men that might stand up for them have the financial capability that he does. And sowing your oats, sowing your wild oats, keep them oats to yourself, you know? Keep them to yourself. Don't sell them everywhere. Keep them in your pocket. And um, that's your pocket. Yeah. <clears throat> <laughs> Keep there, and that's it. That's all I'm gonna say. Carlton, Alex called on God for this, so I'm gonna go ahead and bring on and mention. Go ahead and use the good book. Um, uh, y'all gotta excuse me. There's a storm on here. So, uh oh. Um. So yeah. So God was mentioned. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring him up. You know, it says to be fruitful and multiply. All right. So we're gonna okay. start off with that. Um no, trust me. So then, <laughs> oh, well, just keep that in mind, though. Just keep that in mind. But then also, um, don't the scripture. Okay, go ahead. Unfortunately, unfortunately, <laughs> us, we all don't have a five hundred million dollar net worth. All right. So there is no way that we can possibly fathom how these children will technically be loved and cared for, and or to be able to really necessarily know if they will grow up to be positive or negative individuals in today's society. Um, again, he's having mo these multiple women, these uh, multiple children that are being born. Um, we don't say anything to the Prince Emirates and things like that in Saudi Arabia and Dubai with their billions and billions of dollars doing the same exact thing. Um, but however, this successful black man is selectively choosing who he wants his, who he wants to have his children. That is something that he is making <laughs> his own will to go about and select who he's having children with. So it's not, let's say, not saying wild oats, but he's like a farmer who has a bag of seed and the seeds have to be planted. And so he's like, okay, well, I'm going to go ahead and plant. Okay, I like this piece of, I like this piece of dirt here. I'm going to plant here. I like this piece of land here. I'm going to plant here. And I have the means to take care of everything that I am doing. 
So again, go right back to the book. Be fruitful and multiply. He's not putting any children out here that you're not able to support. These women are also supported as well. Um, now, me, myself, and I, I'm not going about laying royal oats and everything, looking for eight children, and um, and trying to have successful relationships with eight women and more and more and more. However many women there are, I mean, <laughs> I, not happening with me at all. But even if I had the means, but for him, with him having the means, with him being selective actually being decisive in what he's trying to do. Um, I necessarily can't necessarily go against it. I wonder how selective he's being, though, because I would imagine he just goes for women who are okay with it. I don't know what hard requirements he would have because he's not being protected. And so he's having sex with eight plus... He's he having sex with them and probably other women. But then who are they sleeping with on top of that? And then back to Alex's point, Yes, financially, he may be able to take care of them. But also, the only reason why he's financially able to take care of them is because he has 10 jobs. If you have 10 jobs, there's no way that you can be mentally and physically present for eight different households. You can show up for the maternity shoots. You can show up for the gender reveals. You can show up <laughs> for the baby showers. You can oh, show up to blow out the candles in your birthday. It, it should that are you there? The huh? That's what we are all creating from the outside, like. I'm speaking, we're, we're looking for an outside in. We don't know what their household is like. He could have three women, three children. They all cooperate <laughs> together. They're in this house. They could three in that I cooperate over here in this house. We don't know how they have what is established. We don't know their relationships, their inner workings. And so what's happening is obviously there's some kind of agreement between him and that woman that he is dealing with that this is okay, that what we're doing, this co-parenting thing, whatever we're doing is okay, it's fine. All right. And with Those that, women are facing a bag. With that, let's just keep, said, like, so let's just keep they, them the bag on, and it's sad. <laughs> but them being on the same page with the mother and the father of that child being on the same page, that child is likely to be just fine. So that's where I go. That's where I stand on with Alex. The mother and the father of that child. We're not the mother or the father. We don't bring any income into that child's world. We don't put the food in front of them. We don't do anything for that child. But they, the people that do, they are fine with what with what is this, with what they have and what they what they have established. So we have to let them live. We have to let them live and let them be. That's why I'm saying I don't really have a point or I don't stand on whether he's what he's doing or not. I don't have a oh go for it, Nick Cannon, do your thing or nah, he's just a bad man or anything like that. It's just <laughs> I don't think he's a bad man. I think he makes poor choices. That's not what. But I, go ahead, that's <laughs> go not ahead, Cam, because I have more thoughts. Than Cam yeah, yeah. On <laughs> I don't have. A, a ton that is different. I, I don't totally agree with Carlton, but I do agree with some of it. Uh, I I agree that it's a non-traditional family. And I think, again, like I said earlier, people try to, you know, people want this to be in a perfect box or this, this societal standard of, of what a traditional home looks like. And it's, and it's different now. Or it's different for him. I mean, it's, it's different in a lot of ways. Like, we see blended homes all the time, right? Um, I mean, I have a half sibling who's, you know, you know, other than referring to him occasionally as a half sibling, like that is my brother. So I, I do think there <laughs> are um, ways for that family to be whole. I do think once you hit a certain threshold of like how many kids you have and how many, you know, mothers of those children you have, it, it becomes a lot to kind of mediate and, and spread yourself equally into so I, I think that's where he's going to fall short I worry about like maybe the you know pathology he's setting um for for those kids and what they may deem appropriate in the future for themselves um you know mm -hmm. history repeats <clears throat> repeats himself re repeats itself um I was going to say something uh that goes back to what you said Daisha is like let's think about how many kids he tried for that he didn't have, right? So, right. Uh, and there was something else some time ago, you know, one of his children uh, passed away mm -hmm. from cancer. And I remember there being something in the article, obviously, I don't know, I'm not in that household, but there was something where like the soon to be baby mama um, was like kind of quieted. Like she's like, he was like, let's hold off on announcing that you're pregnant because I just had, a death and we want to respect this mother and so I think when you're trying to juggle those types of things that's just kind of like wow 
I mean, if it works for them, it works for them. I, I think, you know, nobody's around here competing for Nick Cannon. I don't think the women see him in that way. It's not this possessive, like, monogamous thing. I also don't think it's a big sister wife thing either. <clears throat> and so people want it to be something. And it just is whatever they've defined it to be. You know, if the kids are taken care of. I mean, I worry about the social, social emotional component for the, for the child later in life. But, you know, you know, th- there, there's a, a lot worse <laughs> happening in single family households. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I guess the only time that I have a lot of pushback is when I hate to say this, and I'm sorry if I sound judgmental, but I do not think that this is something that we need to normalize. I don't. Because the average person can't keep up with it. Financially, they cannot. Um, and so you do have people out here being reckless and kind of just making children everywhere. I personally have a basketball team of siblings. So I'm not just speaking and pulling things from the sky. Like, I've lived it. And now that I'm 27 and I have all of these siblings, that parent has to... It's hard for them to divide their time and to divide, like, finances because... You graduate, you want to get a car, you want to go to college. What if you want to start a business? What if you then have kids and you need help? It They have to, like, pick and choose what they do for you. So that that's all I'm saying. Um, I didn't want to harp on the Lori Harvey thing because I was tired of hearing about it anyway. But I'm going to say that again. I don't understand why we normalize, <laughs> like, the Nick Cannons, the Futures, the Boosies, the people, um, Country Wayne, people who have all of these kids. But then we have so much heat for Lori Harvey, and we have no idea what she's doing other than dating. So, um, did you have anything, Carlton? I saw you <laughs> make a face. You're muted. Oh, nothing? Okay. So, yes, I think it was yesterday. DJ Academics, who's a DJ, he's a YouTuber, he has a show. Um, some audio came out of him <laughs> of him admitting that he thinks it's okay to date teenagers um, when you are 20. He said there is not a big difference between a 20-year-old, a 21-year-old, and a 17-year-old. If she has a college ID, she can get, and, if, and he said he doesn't care if she's 17 or 17 and a half, she's going to get blah, blah, blah. Um, he then doubled down on it again today on his YouTube basically saying the same thing like he said what he said take it or leave it um yeah I think jail is the difference (laughs) yeah he's sick he's sick in the head I can't agree I didn't see this so this is new news but is Mm -hmm. he saying that (laughs) because right like listen when I was a ninth grader I could date a 12th grader right and yeah. there's, you know, I was young for my age group, so there probably was a four-year difference. Mm-hmm. Um, and obviously, that person is going to be 20, and I'm going to be 16, or 20, and I'm 17. I think that type of thing happens because we were kids together, and we're growing mm-hmm. up together. What I think is predatory is when you're 21 in college, actively seeking out teenage girls, like, I feel mm-hmm. like at some point, you know, if you're 21 and you're trying to, like, talk to a 16-year-old in a mall, like, come on. You know, I feel like, I mean, like, mentally, maybe there's, like, people don't realize they're in a different age group um, and the expectations are different there. But I, I don't think anyone should be walking around promoting it. Like, it's cool. Like, there's not that much of a difference. It, there, there truly is. I think later, when I'm 30 and you're 34, that looks so much different than... You know, yeah. it's it's a lot different at that point. Yes. Yes to what you said. <laughs> yeah, he's childish. <laughs> that's not that childish. That's like psycho. That's um predatory. That's um it's yeah, it's, there's nothing as a man as a man, there's nothing right about that. Um like that age gap. Everything was right. Twenty one, twenty, nineteen, eighteen. If he had stopped at 18, the statement would have been a very legitimate statement that people would be like, okay, well, he's kind of weird for going after young girls. But at 18, we all know that that's the legal age of consent. So, like, but, yeah, other than that, nah, he, he's sick. I, mean, I, I also I guess, think – Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. I also think there's a level of 
um, insecurity that comes with that. You know, we're, we're talking about an age difference of a couple years, but we're also talking about maturity levels. And so you're going to have a different experience at 21 and 22 and 23 than you are at 16, 17, um, because, you know, generally at that age, you're still being taken care of by your parents. You don't really have a lot of responsibility except for school. When you're in these other ages, you're in college, you have a lot more freedom. So it's just a different mindset you're going to be in, even though it's a couple of years different in age, it's a completely different mindset. And when I hear about situations like that, especially from um, his name, how you say his name? Academics. 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 Like academic. Yeah. <laughs> um, it just makes me feel like you can't get a girl your own age or your own, you know, m level of maturity. Um, and I also feel like men who, you know, like, uh, uh, like she said before, a different like thirty four and thirty. That's not bad. You guys have already gone through you know, some mm -hmm. life and things like that. But 16, 21, 17, 21. A little, a little 16 year old, 17 year old, they're gonna be starstruck. They're gonna be like, yeah, my boyfriend, he's in college and he has a car and he can buy me things. And I feel like there's a level of control you get when you deal with a woman or someone, either, either way, who's younger than you. You get some kind of control or some yeah. kind of upper hand because you, you are a bit more established. So that's what I was going to say. I think that when you're dating somebody who's significantly younger than you, it is about control because you, you think that you can mold them into whatever it is that you want them to be. But also, like, what 20-something-year-old what is naturally running in the same circles as a teenager? That just does not happen. But that actually, and, back to what Camilla was saying, though, about how, like, you might have grown up, came out of college, go to in high school, and they still could kind of, you know, come home on the weekends and or on vacation, but you can kind of still get in that mix up with that there, but it's about just simply knowing like, okay, I'm yeah. eight, they're 17, I'm 20, they're, they're 17, 16, whatever the case may be, and just moving about knowing like, hey, okay, that's not right. Just simply, that's not right. That's all it is. But I, I hear what you're saying, but I feel like I'm not even thinking about this specific example of 17 and 20. I'm thinking about like, when I was in high school, and grown men are coming after school to pick up girls. That's what I mean. Like, why Why are you in that mindset? It's a control thing, because obviously a teenage boy is not going to have the same things as a 20-something-year-old man. And if you're a high school girl who's looking for that, and you're naive, you think, oh, I'm special, I'm mature, when in reality, he's just taking control of you. I mean, I've seen it happen so many times, back when I was in high school and now working with teenage girls. Like I yeah, said, it's just a sick, sick thought. Yeah, I think there's not much more that a 21 year old or 20, you know, let's whatever, early 20s um, person, because women do this too to young men. Yeah. Um, so there's nothing that a 20 something um, <laughs> who's who's frequenting frequenting around teenagers. To me, there's not a lot of difference other than maybe that person has a car and maybe that person has a job. Like, if they're around teenagers often, it's because they haven't moved on to the next thing. It's because they're not accomplishing the next thing. Like, it's a very, I'm going to say small town mentality because I can't think of a, another way to uh, phrase it. But it's kind of like you just miss that mark to get to the next thing. And now you're just kind of living in, in what was and who you have access to. I mean, that's why people kind of frown upon you know, the, the Jada Pinkett's out there. That's why people are disgusted with the R. Kelly's out there. So I'm like, for him to say that and know that, you know, there's this uh, uh, societal understanding and, and consensus around how predatory that is. <laughs> is uh, the fact that he was able to say that, double down on it, and not have a natural, like, gut reaction, like, oh, wait, this is probably not appropriate to say. Like, yeah, I'm, that, I wouldn't have my teenage daughter around this dude. Yeah, no. Did somebody else said something? I felt like somebody said something in the middle of it. No. Um. So the only other thing that happened that I saw, which I didn't think was news, but it was shared a lot. Uh, Carisha from the City Girls <laughs> has a new show no on, Revolt <laughs> on Revolt TV called Carisha Please, and her first guest was Diddy, and she asked him like, "So what are we? What are we doing?" And they both agreed that they're single, but they're dating. 
And so people kind of were up in arms, like, oh, my God, she's playing her. Um, which I didn't take it as him playing her, but I don't know. What what, what do y'all think about that? I think uh, she's living what she preaches. She's a city girl, and she's being a city girl, and she's <laughs> herself a dollar. Um, I don't think it's bad to just, you know, to be dating as long as both parties know I'm dating, you know, I'm single, but I'm dating. So I might be talking to other people too, as long as both people are informed. Now, the thing that I don't necessarily like about the situation is even though she said, yeah, we're, I'm, I'm single too and we're dating. I feel as if she might not necessarily be more invested, but want more um, commitment than and Diddy is going to give her because if you're just if you're single and you're dating why would you be going back and forth with another woman that he's dating if if y'all are just dating you know you can't expect him to only date you if you've agreed that you guys are both single um it's not something I would do what you know, was up with it he's so public with a relationship like that like w the other woman he's dating yeah they were going back like why why were they going back and forth Oh, like it's just oh I well I was with him the other night and this is the picture of us together oh well me and him are together blah 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 okay well he don't really want to I don't know something like that like they it's both oh, I mean okay. it's, it's like <laughs> y'all both are dating the same man and I don't be like he's playing y'all because y'all are willing parties to the situation and it's not a situation I think anyone should aspire to unless you know you a city girl and that is your goal do you boo but yeah that's my opinion He's also old enough to be their fathers, but hey, go ahead. <laughs> or any anybody, Cam or Carlton. Oh, you're on mute. I thought Cam was going to hear something to say. Sorry, I was dropping some stuff in the chat. Go ahead. Hey, well, um, I think what's understood doesn't have to be explained. I felt like it was an attention grab to their relationship, whatever they got going on. We don't know what they got going on. It's, it's simple like if there's nothing that needs to be put out in the air it's y'all's relationship you know there's nothing that needs to be explained so let, obviously his answer was like his answer <laughs> from a man was simple and simple like you know what we are we don't have these conversations riding around doing what we do etc cetera, etc cetera. like you know why are you trying to put it on blast you know like why are you trying to put it on blast you see the pictures you see what's going out into the media and whatever they say doesn't dictate what we do so yeah, and, I mean, she's getting out of it what she wants, I guess. A good time, some gifts, and a show. <laughs> so up. Basically up. So what do we have to talk about our relationship for when you're winning? Why does it have to be out main front, mainstream front page if we're winning? That's all I got to say. And that's what makes me think that, that she actually is more invested and that she wants more for her to even ask those questions, for her to even do that. Um, but she knows he probably don't want all that. That should be held behind closed doors. That's, those are questions you ask behind closed doors. And not on national, international right. television. Yeah, but that's what you get when you're in your 50s dating a woman in her 20s. When you're in your For 20s, her. everything is social media social media uh, fodder. Yeah, when yes. you're in your 50s, you're trying to chill out. <laughs> they're both adults, though. They're both, they're both adults, though, at the end of the day. So I'm still going to stand on the fact that like, she should have that conversation. That's correct. That's correct. The action that was the wrong way to do it. She needs to have that conversation on the jet in the back of the Maybach, wherever they ride in, through, in the whole in the hotel. They can have it at dinner for all, they, for all we care. Like you know what I'm saying, but not in the national national television views, all that stuff. That was an attention grab. You know, I feel like that may not have been the first time she brought up something like that. I feel like for her to kind of ambush him on national television is forcing him to give an answer. So maybe it's something they might have touched on before and she wasn't getting the answer she wants. So she decided to like, still you got know, the same. <laughs> probably still got the same answer. So why do you, okay, I do have a question for you, Alex. Why do you believe that she wants something more than what she's already getting from him? Yeah, I think so. I think she's getting what she wants, which, you know, all the gifts, the money, the attention and stuff. But if mm -hmm. you were content in your situation as it was, I don't think it's necessarily, you know, necessary to put on blast nationally <laughs> what 
to ask, what are we like on national television? I do think that's a question you can ask in private, but I also do agree. Like it is based off maturity and he's a 50 something year old man dating someone in their twenties. Um, but if you were content with the situation, that's not something you would even, you know, bring up. Like Carlton said earlier, like what's understood doesn't need to be discussed. And so if you're not understanding and you're confusing, you're not sure where the relationship is, you're going to ask those kinds of questions. But those kinds of questions, I believe lead to a more serious relationship especially with her arguing with the other woman on Twitter. Like, obviously, yeah. it bothers you that he has another woman that he's dating publicly, and he's dating you publicly. Like, we didn't, like, we, as far as we knew, from them dropping all these grandiose pictures on the staircases and the outfits, we're like, oh, they're together. But for her to ask on national television, it's like, oh, you didn't know what y'all were. And so I feel like if it, if it's, if it's like that and you're arguing back and forth with the other woman, if you were satisfied with the position you were in and in the situation that you were in, you wouldn't be arguing with the other woman because you already knew what it was. And so I feel like she does want monogamy from him potentially. Maybe it's not something she's fully realizing herself or something that she wants to ask for um, because like, I feel like she kind of knows what it is and what he wants and that's not it. I think the question was probably posed just because that's what people want to know, right? It's kind of like yeah. you get you get Diddy on a couch. How are y'all not gonna talk about what y'all are? So I, you know, maybe it was a um, spur of the moment question. I thought it was just kind of like goofy and playful. I honestly didn't think she was like looking for a real answer, but that was also my first time hearing her speak I didn't know what the hell she was saying to be honest <laughs> so and I was like what I was like is this what their conversations are like because I was like oh so right I mean I, I don't know like I, I thought it was just a goofy I mean I only saw a clip so I thought it was just like a little goofy you know we go together real bad like first of all like I ain't say I go <laughs> with somebody since I was a teenager so I was just right. kind of like you know this is just a little fun little playful thing or whatever you get to see them kind of laugh and have a moment together. I, I mean, I thought it was fine. Um, I, I don't know that. I don't know that I've drawn the conclusion that she wants something more. I do think, you know, that's a display of like, like stage one of having like a deeper conversation about what a relationship really is. Like, I mean, like she's she needs to up the ante, like. Carlton and Alice are saying behind closed doors if she does want something real she has to like you know set uh some type of boundary and standards but at the same time you know a lot of people stay in situationships because they're benefiting those situationships too so it's kind of one of those like double-edged swords where I think you know it's fun he's Diddy she's Carisha like they, they it, it has a fun little thing to it I think, at, you know, I don't think anybody's thinking that we're going to hear wedding bells for them. No. And so it would surprise me if she thinks <laughs> that they are. But you never know. People's expectations, you know, I mean, we, we don't know the, the depth of their relationship and their connection. I mean, but she, and see, I didn't watch the whole episode, but I did see her ask him about like a time his heart was broken or someone that got away. And he admitted, yeah, and people thought that he was describing um, Cassie, which mm -hmm. Cassie's a singer, if people don't know that. And they were together for like a decade, I believe. Mm -hmm. And I get, I'm assuming Cassie wanted marriage and he did not, but now she's married with two kids. So mm -hmm. I sure like they didn't. That looks fine. <laughs> <laughs> so I feel like if they're dating him, they kind of know what it is that he doesn't want to, I don't think he wants to be married and I don't think, and that's fine. That's fine for him. I think they should just know that going in, that it's just going to be a fun ride and we're just going to enjoy it while it lasts. So anybody have anything else? Everybody yeah. Has I, their, oh, go ahead. Carl. Everybody, everybody has their wants and needs. I mean, hey, yeah. You're 50, when you're 80, when you're 25. And everybody has been wants and needs. So, Alex, you were saying something. I mean, basically, I was going to say that something along the lines of that, that it's, you know, it just sounds like a transactional relationship um, between him and whoever else he's with. You know, him and the other girl Carisha was arguing with. He gets to be with young women who are exciting and fun and, you know, get what he wants out of that. And they 
get that too and get to be with Diddy and all his money and things like that. So it, it seems very, I mean, to me, it just seems transactional. People are getting what they want, like Carlton said. Yeah. Um, was there anything else happening in the in the news, I should say, that y'all wanted to bring up? You on mute? I know. Yeah, I think he is. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm on mute to be respectful, but, you know, no. Nah. Okay. Did we want to talk about, I know we have been hearing a lot about Lori and and Michael. I saw Carlton make some faces earlier. I just I know. What are you going to say? <laughs> I mean, we can. I'm talking about that. I didn't understand why she got so much heat. And I think it was because a lot of assumptions were made that um, Michael is this, he is the guy. And how could she turn down the guy? He's handsome. He's built. He's successful. He has money. How could you say no to him? But at the end of the day, she grew up wealthy. Money may not move her. And he may not be the most attractive person that she's had. So I don't know. Like, no one really knows what happened between them and who wanted what. <laughs> Carlton looks like he just is about to bust. But I'll yeah, I, I don't know. <laughs> just say it, man. One thing one thing I want to point out, I know um, Michael B. Jordan's been getting a lot of flack. Um, people have been calling him, like, you know, mostly from men, like, ah, oh, he, he fell for that or down bad or um like why would you try to marry her or if you know if that was even the case like why would you try to pin her down or you simp for that and you know i just don't think there's anything wrong with a man trying to marry a woman if he's been in a relationship granted they should have talked about the perimeters of their relationship yeah. earlier <laughs> if, that, if that was the case if he was looking for marriage and she was just like no um they should talk about that earlier but i don't think there's anything wrong with a man who wants to settle down and marry somebody. Like, I don't understand why he's getting made fun of for that. Yeah, man. He shouldn't have did it. That's all I'm saying. He shouldn't have done it? Why? That was a mistake. She was, what, huh? like, they started dating when she was, like, what, 23, 24? You're like, 30. I was going to bring that up. Yeah. She did it, bro. She, she, she said, I having fun, bro. Go ahead and let that go. Let so that. why do you have that stance with Lori and Michael, but you don't feel that way when it comes to Diddy and Carisha, because that's a 30 year gap. That's not just 10. Hey, listen, there was no, like, what's her name? What's her name? Carisha? Yeah. She's, left. she's, she's, she's growing. She's also coming up with that. There's a, there's a part, part that Diddy plays in that with his power and his resources. But it's not that I don't have a problem with anything. I'm really understanding, like, neutral. I'm like, I'm looking at both sides, but like, um, like, like everybody has their wants and needs. Again, I, I'm gonna stand on that. I'm gonna stand on that part. Like everybody has wants and needs. He wants it. That's his decision. I got nothing to do with it. I'm nothing to do with it. Like nothing to do with me. But at the end of the day, I'm just talking about reality. She's 23, 24. You're 32, 33, whatever. However, however old. You know, mm -hmm. they're having fun. You know, you're getting to a point that you want to chill out and relax. That just usually doesn't go. Come on, man. Just reality, life. It's reality in life. Most people in their 20s, under 25, they still turn. Getting lit. Shots of cats amigos. Let me drive the boat. <laughs> That's what they're doing. So, I mean, like, he, he knew it as, he, as a man. He already knew, hey, I'm getting to that point where I want to settle down and be real and be and, and let him and lock in. And that job. I mean, this makes me think about, you know, Aegis Alba and, and his wife. Wife? Um, mm -hmm. and you know, there's a big age gap. I think she was 29, maybe when they, they got married and, mm -hmm. you know, so I think it is, you know, a poke at Lori Harvey's character, um, in terms of like her, like promiscuity, um, because we see it happen where, you know, there's this, there's this age gap and I can't even tell you Idris Alba's wife's name. But I remember everyone was like swooning over their relationship and seeing them boot up, right? There there was never really uh, anything negative that I can remember put out there about like, oh, she, you know, she's too young. She's trying to like live life or whatever. Um, so, you know, I think, you know, Lori Harvey is having this kind of looming, uh, I'm going to say like patriarchal, traditional cloud hanging over her head 
Um, and I think, you know, men in particular are holding her to um, this standard that many of them don't hold themselves to. Uh, Correct. <laughs> so that's that's where I'll leave that. Okay. But also, I think that there are guys who are trying to use this now as an excuse of see, fellas, when you're, when you're a nice guy, they play you. And they don't want the good guys. They don't want the nerds. They don't want the dorks. And I think that that's corny. <laughs> to say that you can't be a good guy because a woman's going to turn you down. Again, no one knows why they broke up or if they were even a real couple. Seriously. <laughs> to be could, honest. Could have been a publicity stunt. Right. That's what I heard, too. Because Michael B. Jordan um, had a proclivity to be dating white women. And, you know. <laughs> he was always with white women. It was all over. Yeah. Proclivities, you know. So, who knows? Which, you know, you know, date who you want to date, but why do a fake yes. relationship to make sure that you don't lose your Black women Fan audience? Mm -hmm. Well, yes, yeah, Carlton, money, but it's still corny. I don't like it. Man, for the love of it, for the love of money, man. I guess. Kill their own. <laughs> well, you know, you have a public relations team for a reason. <laughs> you got to put them to work. <laughs> yeah. And they're working. They working. But there are yeah. plenty other uh black actors, athletes, people, men who don't marry black women who still are fine with the black community. People might throw shade, but they still make money. It doesn't stop their bag. You gotta think about you gotta think of the of the how far that, that bag stretches though. Lloyd Harvey even though she isn't biologically related to Steve Harvey, he, she has her ties to Steve Harvey, his empire that's been established. Michael B. Jordan, the up and coming actor that he is, his empire being established. Anything that could positively, if anything positively had happened between Michael B. Jordan and Lloyd Harvey, you got to think about like the c combination of two like empires, two rising empire, well, an established empire and that of Steve Harvey. And then you got to think of Michael B. Jordan and then how that would come together and create something to create something that, that's just, Thinking of long, that's just longevity there. Thinking with longevity, if anything had been positive out of the two of them. So that's a big yeah. bag just to, just to talk about there. That's true. Yeah. I think there was dual benefit there, right? If you think about, you know, Michael B. Jordan being kind of like America's sweetheart for a lot of, a lot of uh, black and brown women. It, I remember when he was on like GQ magazine and, it, you know, everybody was swooning over, over him at one point. So I think he kind of helped with the the wholesome image that Lori needed, and uh, you know I think Lori Harvey being an influential like you know beautiful uh, black woman is like okay now we can um, we can kind of spruce up Michael B Jordan's uh, followership like we can gain <laughs> the black woman's trust yeah. again since he's been seen on these boats with all these white women over and over and over. <laughs> so, you know, I think you know, be... it was a mutual benefit if, if we really dive into that as being like a publicity stunt possibility. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know how real it was. I think Laurie Harvey is dating. I mean, many of us date. Is I mean, now this just makes me think about Sierra and like everybody's dog in Sierra and calling Russell Wilson corny all the time right but when she was with future it's like what do y'all want do y'all want to see us with a dog like i'm trying to figure out <laughs> like you don't like us happy you don't like us when we're with you know ain't shit people Dude, <laughs> i yeah. want to say that because <laughs> uh, i work in education but I'm say this might see this. um but yeah so i i feel like i yeah that that's like the conundrum of it all of like you, you can't win sometimes out here as the you black can. woman. And I don't think that women have a problem dating the nerd or the dorky guy. Just don't don't pick up do, huh? huh? Don't pick them huh? last. Don't pick them last. Well, here's the, the thing though. You, <laughs> here's the thing that you can be dorky, you can be a nerdy or whatever, but have some level of confidence to you. I feel like growing up, the dudes who were nerdy or dorky, not all of them, they would do weird stuff, like run through the hallways with their arms behind their back. Sir, <laughs> what are you doing? Yeah, so, yeah. no, 
no, I don't want to go on a date with somebody doing that. But you can don't do be... my anime <laughs> lovers like that. Come on now. I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't that in the hallway. <laughs> that's that exactly hallway. what I'm talking about. Doing all these like, come on, man. Oh man. No. So yes, I do think that they do like them. Just have some some level of confidence to you and you'll be fine. In my opinion. I think I think I can agree with you on that from a male standpoint, but again, I'm gonna say Stop going to the ladies. Stop going for the drug dealer, scammer, rapper, racks in his pocket, don't own his car, car his mama, car to trap out of. You know, don't go for that first. <laughs> go for that first. He's nothing like that man that's in your, most of the time, the guys usually going, they're going for that guy that's not anything like that. It's not anything, it's, or if the, if the father's in their life, you know, or that man that's in their life, like, don't go against, against that. Like, that person that's trying to put that structure, that's been trying to put structure in your life, because usually that's, then they turn back around to that and usually do come back home to that person that's in, in putting in the mud, getting it out the mud, like grinding hard, do maybe it's a nine to five or whatever the case may be that's established, but it's different. It's a lifestyle that you're really used to, but you've been going against the grain and then trying to spin back around. They try to spin back around and the good guy's usually not going for it. That's where all the guys come in and they're like, Oh no, nah, bro, don't do that. Don't do that. Blah, 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 blah. Because of the fact that, like don't keep them came back around to what she was, was already there. I appreciate what you're saying, Carlton. My only pushback to that is that Pookies and Ray Rays have degrees as well. Pookies and Ray Rays are not just people in the street. Um, and also, and also, men do the same thing. Men tend to chase the spicy women who are about drama, who are loud, who are big personality, and they don't want the good girl who's chill until they're done with the game Ready and they to have a headache oh. and they want to settle down so it, it goes both ways <laughs> just saying also i am with a rapper okay and he is a great guy <laughs> i forgot about that and <laughs> <he's> <laughs> okay yeah. his name is yeah. not Kiki or ray ray yeah. he definitely <laughs> doesn't go around with flashing right or uh, flashing flashing money and things of like that so again i'm get like you're <laughs> Not that he's not like you know we know what we're talking about. We're looking y'all are looking for like those women that we're looking for. That guy that's top of the class, that popular guy, you know, that's looking for the that's also that's attention seeking, grabbing all the attention. And I'm talking about attention from males. Oh, I wanna be like big bro, I wanna be like that. Like, nah, we know who we're that they were talking about that kind of guy. And all right, and then there's a there's a guy, let's say just say he's a regular regular dude, plays on the football team, got a good GPA casual dude, confident or whatever, like Daisha was saying. That guy's got structure at home. You know what I'm saying? Bro? Probably got mom and dad or mom and grandma and grandpa at home with structure. But what y'all but what happens is there are women, there are females that are running to the attention seeker who's got missing missing pieces in himself, missing pieces at home, missing pieces in in society. And that's nothing like what most most of these women are most women most women are coming from. Like they're coming from, they're coming from a place of protection. They've got older brothers and things, even if they don't have necessarily dad, they've got a man, some, some kind of man or most have a man that's showing them some kind of way of this isn't what you need to be going for. This is what you need to be going for most. And so what yeah. they do go for their attention seeker, that top dog, that top tier. And it's like, okay, top tier may have, may have all this attention, but is he really going to be bringing to going to be bringing you for bring you up or it's going to be slapping you up in the back of the toyota like meanwhile you got our athlete our gpa he's probably going to college in a couple of years may not be going to the nfl but he's going he's going in a direction that's for success and that's the guy that's looked over and that's what we're talking that's that's what i'm getting at here i i hear you coming yeah. from <laughs> yeah i can agree with that i can definitely agree with that um i do think it's it's true on both sides um but I, I definitely see see where you're at when you when you make that point there. I do want to point out that I was ghosted by a good guy. So there's that. I was gonna <laughs> I was gonna say that. I was like, the good guys be playing too. Like Okay. And I mean I guess the counter counter argument could be like were they were they ever a good guy? But I, I mean I think there are some some fantastic guys out here. And people make mistakes, right? We're not looking for a flawless, you know, execution. We're learning and growing as we date and things. But, I mean, yeah, it's not always, like, the top dog that's kind of, you know, making heads turn in the room that's playing the playing women. Uh, so it's, it's just hard. I mean, it's hard to kind of 
put a label on on what the good guy looks like now. Correct. Yeah, because I, I don't like the flashy I, guy. But yeah, that's why y'all. That's why y'all. Yeah, the, 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 the people that stand out. They're our allies. You know, they're our allies. Oh yeah, of course. Yeah. But you gotta watch your track record, women. You gotta watch your track record because that's okay. What about men? Men need to watch their track record. <laughs> their track record be longer than all of ours. <laughs> That, Hold on, when you said track record, you mean how many That may be true, but the far a farmer has seeds, has millions of seeds. A farmer walks around that field with... with <laughs> you are talking about this farmer. You are blowing <laughs> me with this. Yeah. Blowing me. Farmer has the seeds. Farmer has the seeds, man. This so, is a very patriarchal, male-dominated, plants may not misogynistic, grow. Uh, you know... A uh, analogy that you're using. Hey, it's make. I'm glad it's connecting though, because uh, y'all are connecting to this farmer though. No, right? when you no. say track record, are you saying how many I people mean, you've been with, or the type? No, of no, 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 not even necessarily like people that you've been with, like um, oh. like anything like that. But like you know, just your track, your track record is like, like, all right, um, you know, like you could, you could be, you could be sexually involved with somebody, but like it's also like where you getting beat up by, like where you dealing with that guy that was beating up on you, or you. All that matters too. All of that, all that matters too. Oh. Like everything, like it kind of shows, like you know, respect for yourself. All of that, all of that plays a part. I can't completely hold anybody to the fire, male or female, because you live and grow. Like you, I don't think every most people have to kiss a lot of frogs before they meet the person they're supposed to be with. So I don't want to say like, oh, you've been in this trashy relationship. So what does that say about you? Because I think. Everybody has been there. Every everybody has been with somebody, and you look back at it, you're like, "What the hell was I doing?" So I don't, and I don't think that's a gender thing either. I don't know. Yeah, I think every, oh. I think everybody has the potential to be on either side of all of the different perspectives and situations we've been talking about, um, and. You know, Carlton, yeah, I think you do have a good point when it comes to, like, who we choose. But I also know, I know a lot of men who've chosen, you know, and they've gotten their heart broken. They went with one type of girl. And and then I also see a lot where, you know, men, when they're, they'll date a certain type of woman or even take the good girl and instead of, you know, knowing that she wants longevity or whatever, treat her like a short-term thing. And then eventually later on, they want a long-term thing. I think everyone, I think everyone plays a part in the game. Like, honestly, I think everyone is playing games with each other. And I feel like what it really comes down to is being at a place where you, you know what you want, whether it's with somebody else or within yourself, you know, you've dealt with your insecurities or you're working on them and you can recognize them. And then when you attach your life to someone else, whether it be for short-term or long-term, you guys are communicating and you're clear about what both of your intentions are. Agree. Anyone else? Honestly, it's the best policy. I agree. <laughs> so this has been an interesting conversation. Thank you to everybody that kind of trickled in and listened. Um, thank you, Alex, Cam, and Carlson for joining me. I have been Deja D. Join us next week at some point for another live. Um, and hopefully some other things will happen in the world so we have something else to talk about. <laughs> All right.